What does it take to wipe out a disease that's been around for centuries? So far, smallpox is the only human disease to have been completely eradicated. Contagious and viral, it dates back to the Egyptian Empire when it killed around 3 in every 10 people who contracted it. It took a 15-year-long program, including vaccination campaigns, surveillance and prevention measures, before the world could finally be declared smallpox-free in 1980. Many more diseases could go the same way, but why does it take so long to eradicate a disease and what are the last mile hurdles we need to overcome? Let's take a look at three diseases on the brink of eradication, leprosy, trachoma, and polio. Leprosy is one of mankind's oldest diseases. It's caused by a bacteria which affects skin and nerves and can, if not treated, lead to a life-changing disability. Between 1981 and the early 2000s, cases dropped by almost 99%, in large part due to efforts by the World Health Organization, the Nippon Foundation, and Novartis. They provide treatment for leprosy sufferers worldwide free of cost. More than 16 million affected people have been treated over the past 20 years, but still 600 people are diagnosed every day. A lack of global expertise and severe social stigma plague efforts to rid the world of leprosy. But the Novartis Foundation is hopeful that with technological advances and a renewed approach to diagnosis, efforts will get back on track. We have started working on innovative tools and one of them is a digital health tool. You can take images of a suspect lesion on your skin, send it to the reference center and get a probability of a diagnosis back. And the other innovative tool we are currently working on is on a real state-of-the-art molecular test, a diagnostic test for leprosy, because that doesn't exist currently. Trachoma is also a bacterial disease. It turns the eyelashes painfully inwards and is the leading infectious cause of blindness in the world. It's most prevalent in places where overcrowdedness is combined with poor access to water and sanitation, making it easier for the infection to spread through physical contact. Since the World Health Organization declared trachoma a public health problem in 1998, 33 countries have received treatment and global antibiotic coverage has increased to 45%. As of July last year, 10 countries have reported achieving elimination goals, and five of these have been certified by the WHO as trachoma-free. The Global Trachoma Mapping Project, which used smartphones to capture data on the presence of the disease, was central to this success. This was a project that really tried to standardize an approach um, for, for collecting high quality data. It was a game changer in the sense that we, before that, there were really sort of rough, rough estimates of where the problem was. And so very, very quickly, programs could take the resources that they were given and focus it in the communities that really needed it and not waste time in areas that didn't. Polio is largely seen as the gold standard for global health professionals working in disease eradication. It's a viral disease that mostly infects children under five by attacking the nervous system and potentially causing irreversible paralysis in a matter of hours. But thanks to international collaboration and the leadership of national governments, polio cases have fallen from 350,000 new cases in 1988 to just a reported 37 in 2016. I think it's this um, incredibly local aspect of the polio eradication initiative that's been sort of the hallmark of the program, having vaccinators come from the communities in which they work so that the level of trust in the vaccinator is very high. And then also the extraordinary partnership of the Global Polio Eradication Initiative, the fact that we've been in partnership for over 30 years and that we're able to leverage the particular expertise of each of the organizations that's involved. Despite the remaining challenges, leprosy, trachoma and polio are all on their way to being eradicated. The three diseases show that with international collaboration, strong leadership and innovation, big progress can be made. What more do you think needs to be done to help wipe out the world's most ancient diseases? Let us know by leaving your comment below.